Hello and welcome to another episode of the Digital Nomad Cafe podcast. Today's guest is Labria La Jones. Hello, Labria. How are you? Hey, you said it right. You were hesitant. I, I stole. I, <laughs> Everybody's always. I, I stole uh, halfway through through saying it. I was like, oh no, I said this right, Labria. <laughs> Everyone's always so hesitant or scared to mess my name up. Here's the thing. I am the only person that's required to know how to say it the first time. If you say it wrong, I will correct you. We'll move on. No one was injured. It's all good. It's all good. But you stumbled through it, but you said it right. It's Libria. So, <laughs> so Libria, you are a character, you know, like your Instagram, your website, your your the video content you put out. I really love them. It's kind of studying you in, in advance of this interview and, and you're you're very cool and your website is beautiful as well i must say like i absolutely love the the layout and the design and everything so for people who maybe aren't familiar with you we have a lot of listeners over here in europe and the uk and ireland and um, why don't you give us a little bit of a who are you and what is it that you do awesome well thank you for that no pressure I'm telling everybody i'm cool i'm all right <laughs> Check out your Instagram. Um, my name's... I'll link it up in the comments. Like, it's cool. You're putting up yeah. all sorts of videos. You know, it's cool. Link it up. Decide for yourself if I'm cool. I think I'm pretty fun. So I am a social, what I call a social educator and remote work advocate. And um, so I teach people how to find and land remote work. A lot of the content that I share is really opening people up to the possibilities that are out there for them. A lot of folks don't know that they can work remotely. A lot of folks don't know that they can work from anywhere. A lot of people don't even think about the fact that they could travel and live in other places. And so I'm really trying to kind of open people's mind to that. And I have this audacious goal to help 10,000 moms land remote work so they can do great work from anywhere and show up for their families that the way the way that they desire. Um, I also have a travel community of over 21,000 moms who love to travel, who want to li literally give their children the world. Um, and aside from all that, I have a full-time job. <laughs> so I am an IT project manager for a uh, software consulting firm. We help we help uh, major companies implement uh, data management software. Okay. So that's the day-to-day, -day, your remote job that you have. And then outside of that, you're doing, you're doing a hybrid. Like, it's very similar to myself. Like, I have a business. I have a podcast. Uh, you know, I have mm -hmm. a... And then I have a job that I work as well. So... It's um, it's interesting when you come across people because sometimes people are very one or the other. It's like you got to be an entrepreneur, you got to work for yourself. You're like, yeah, but you get paid pretty well when you have a remote job uh, with a good company, and it gives you the freedom and flexibility to then explore your business yep. creativity mm -hmm. while not having that freelancer um, burnout, for lack of a better word, <laughs> or the freelancer chase. You know, look, some people can do yeah. it really well, but I was a freelancer for almost five years before I joined Shopify, I ran mm -hmm. my own SEO and, and uh, content business and web design. And it's not always easy, you know, like it was, yeah. it was a graft, it was hard work and it was a lot of hours. And I personally didn't make that much money when I was doing it. So, mm -hmm. um, so look, talk to me about helping people find a remote job. Like it, where would you start with somebody who wanted to find a remote job? <laughs> so I, I usually tell people to start with one, going ahead and getting past the myths that they have in their head about remote work. A lot of people's blocker is a lot of people say, I want remote. I want a remote job. I want to work remotely. I want to work from anywhere. I want location independence. But then when you dig in and start asking them, well, where are you looking? What are you, what are you thinking about doing? They, they haven't done anything. They haven't even started because they, they see this thing that they want but it's completely blocked by whatever myths that they're believing in, right? They believe that remote work is for tech people. They re believe remote work doesn't pay well. They believe that remote jobs don't have benefits. They believe that they don't have enough experience to do remote work. So the first place to start is just to kind of get rid of the myths and get out there and look and to see what's out there, right? All of, the, all of those myths that people are believing, all of those assumptions that people have aren't based on anything. It's based on... I'm assuming that this isn't for me. This is something I want, but I assume that this isn't for me. So the first thing I tell people to start is, you know, accept that it is for you. There's opportunities for you and then go out there and find them. I have a free guide that I provide people with my favorite places to find remote work. And I always tell people that guide is completely agnostic of, you know, what type of work you do, what type of background you have, where you live, um, what kind of degree you have, whether or not you have a degree. 
it's full of job boards that are specific to remote work that have all kinds of remote jobs. They got data, in, they've got entry level remote jobs, customer service remote jobs, finance, accounting, you know, things across the board, project management, recruiters, HR, um, for people that are just now getting into the workforce and people that are experienced all the way up to, you know, the C-suite, right? People that are, you know, CEOs and executive VPs. So there's something for everybody. I think the place that I say to start is make sure you're going to the remote work job boards because, you know, a lot of somebody just inboxed me earlier today and said that they've been looking for remote jobs and haven't been able to find them. And they were on Indeed and LinkedIn, which are fine websites. It's a great website to find jobs, but it's like, you know, looking for a specialized screw at Target. <laughs> sure, they have them. They might have it, but you're going to, you're going to, do some work trying to find it and they may not have it, right? But if you go to a job board that specifies, that that specializes in remote work, you're going to have better options. So, yeah. you know, we work remotely, remote.co, workforce, flex jobs, websites like that that are specific to remote jobs. So that's usually where I tell people to start. Yeah, that's, I mean, look, that that's really good. And I think you, you hit on something there as well that's really important is, is no one, kind of knowing what you want from the company that you're going to apply for as well. Like, like when you say working remote, you know, do you mean working in your bedroom in your house in America? Yeah. Or do right. you mean, I want to spend six months in Tulum every year in Mexico <laughs> and I want to spend the other six months in Spain or something, you know, like, but truthfully, yeah. like, cause there, there's people who want both. And then there's people who just want to be able to work remote and um, not have to be gone out of the house. 12 yep. hours a day driving to and from work who live in America, you know, anywhere, you know, I mean, like from California to Oklahoma, New York, wherever it is, where, where somebody is that, you know, they're sick of having to do the, the subways. And it's the same in London, mm -hmm. too, like having to go on the underground every day and go into an office and, yep. oh, it sucks, you know, <laughs> it's hot <laughs> I don't as miss hell and it's packed and it's coronavirus everywhere. And, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, I I'm glad so you like, pointed this out. I'm glad yeah. you pointed this out, Adam. I'm sorry to cut you off. Yeah. Uh, apologies for that. But I just had to grab onto the comment that you made about, you know, thinking about what what it is you want to accomplish with this type of lifestyle, right? Because work from, you know, remote work doesn't always mean work from anywhere. It doesn't. It's true. You know, some companies are going to require you to be in the United States. Some companies are going to require you to be in a specific state. Right. So some companies are like, it's a remote job, but it's only for Texas or it's only for Georgia, whatever the case may be. So, you know, if you know what it is, what your goal is, then you can start to filter down those jobs and kind of get closer to what you're looking for. Maybe you want to work from home so that you can be at home with your children. And that's perfectly fine. Maybe you want to move abroad, in which case you're looking for a very different type of remote job. And those you know, or tend to be better. Uh, the things that tend to be better for people who want to ex expatriate are like remote first companies. You know, a lot of the technology companies that have built themselves up to be uh, thought leaders in the remote workspace, they typically don't care where you work from, right? No. But then just because your company doesn't say you can live anywhere doesn't mean that they don't believe you can travel anywhere too, right? Because you know, they may say that you need to be U.S. based for the most part, but that means that you can't spend more than 330 days outside of the U.S., right? That still means you could still possibly pick up and go for two weeks to a month and go stay somewhere else or for a little while. So, you know, really getting clear about what type of lifestyle am I hoping for? And that helps you to narrow down the opportunities, but it also helps you when it comes to, you know, the interview when you're trying to understand you know, what is the setup that they allow for so you can ask the right questions? I'm glad you pointed that out. Yeah. No, because I think it is important because mm -hmm. it's come up a few times even on, on these podcasts where it's funny because I, I, I really get both sides of it. I get the people who would never, you know, I would never work for a company and I'll only ever run my own business. And then you have the other side, which is hell no, no. I want a remote job and I want to work on my own stuff on the side. And then you got and, me who's in the middle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'm in the middle yeah. too, though. Yeah. Like, you know, tr truthfully, like, you know, like, because I mean, I have a remote job, but I have the flexibility. You know, I'm fortunate that like, you know, when you're in Europe, it's it's quite easy because they have this tax residency thing where you can spend, you know, half the year um, in Europe. But right now, it's just you just can't go anywhere because of yeah. Well, it, it's not that you can't go anywhere. It's it's, it's not like it was. Let's just put it right. that way. But right. um, you know, e even 
working remote, like I loved going uh, going to cafes and spending maybe mm. an hour or two there in the mornings and breaking up the day after the school drop off. And, and like that's how I like to build my my remote um my remote work day you know what i mean like where you spend some of it outside of the house and some of it inside of the house because then you're not in the house all day yeah. and for a period of the year go somewhere else and work from somewhere else you know even if it's somewhere else in ireland like renting an, uh, an airbnb mm-hmm. and going somewhere that's by the beach and just staying there instead of where i am because because when you have a remote job it allows you to have flexibility yeah. and that's the key. I be- like, and I believe you know. in that. The flexibility is so important to me. And it's not that I hate being in an office. I actually love going to my company's office. I love my coworkers. I like hanging out with them. For me, it's the freedom to choose where I want to work. And I love that you said switching up. I actually just came back from a co-working space today because I just, I've spent the last several weeks getting ready for this three-day conference that I just hosted. And so yes. I've been, you know, heads down at my desk in my home office for three weeks and just needed a change of pace. And that was the beautiful thing about working remotely. You can choose what what your environment is from day to day. And when we first went into the pandemic, I'd say about six months in, a lot of people were like, is this what you were talking about? Remote work, is it sucks. Yeah. <laughs> is this what you're referring to? And I was like, this ain't, this ain't it, guys. This is not it. Nope. You know, we're all stuck in our houses, you know, stuck in our houses yeah. with our spouses, with our kids all day. Nobody can go anywhere. Your houses are basically becoming your prisons, Right. That is not the remote work scenario that I was talking about. I was talking about the fact that I can pick up and go to Prague for a few weeks and work, or I can, you know, go to Thailand for a few weeks and work. And one of the things I didn't mention, Adam, is that I actually took a group of people around the world for a whole year back in 2016. So I took a group of digital nomads, about 31 people left with me, and we traveled the world for a whole year living and working. We stayed in uh, four different countries for three months at a time living and working. That's the flexibility that having a remote job provides. You know, we did a a Prague Czech Republic for for three months, Chiang Mai, Thailand for three months, uh, Cape Town, South Africa for three months, and then uh, Medellin, Colombia for three months. And it was, it was excellent. Yeah, that is awesome. But like, that's an experience that you, you can do when you've created, when you've made the decision to, um, you know, create, the skill set that allows you to have a remote mm-hmm. job because I, I think I think that's an important thing of it at, at the moment because I see a lot of people I mean even chefs like you know I know people I, years ago when I was 17 I actually went to chef college really? and studied I was going to be a chef I wanted to work as a chef in the Caribbean on the <laughs> and, uh, I love that. that that was like my that was my goal because you get paid mad money over there doing that um apparently um but anyway I worked in Spain in a kitchen for like a week and I was like this is way too hot <laughs> That was That's it. I just hilarious. Scrapped, sc- scrapped my chefing career there and then and moved into working in bars. Um, but the uh, being the stereotypical Irish bartender, you know. Um, but the <laughs> where was I going with that? Sorry. Um, yes, the peop- I have people who are chefs who've been chefs for years. You know, reaching out to me, asking me about how do you get into how, you know how could I work online like I've never done it I, 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 but I'm sick of working in kitchens yeah. or kitchens are just they're in trouble like is it been locked down and restaurants uh, it's very hard you know for restaurants to survive Ireland's had like 500 days of lockdown it's been a joke um so you know what I mean so so like I see people who would have never transitioned you know like people in hospitality mm-hmm. uh, even people in construction who are like maybe thinking about something that give me more flexibility more freedom um how, how do I get started online, you know, or what yeah. skills? And what I'm often talking, trying to teach them about is like, you're a chef, you work in a high pressure environment. You've so got many so many transferable skills. skills. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like from people management to stock management, inventory management, um, dealing with pressure, organization. It's like you've, you don't, but they don't see that. They just, yeah. Yeah. Shit, what do I know? It's like, you've like feed 400 people at a wedding, <laughs> like, you know, getting it, like you've got skills and, and that's, I think if you're new to it, you know, or you've never done it before, it, it, it's it's important to try and like make a list mm-hmm. of, of those what I would call transferable skills. Like you might not think of them as highly valuable, but companies are yep. looking for that. Like you know, if you can get somebody who's really skillful at managing people, at managing teams, building systems, like those people are so valuable. Yeah, I you know that's one of the things that we did a whole. We did a whole uh, panel on that. We did a couple of panels on on this topic at the Quick Commuting Conference last weekend. 
conference is over, but the replays will be available pretty soon. And I talk about this very thing in the Remote Ready Bundle in my course. My father was a truck driver and he recently um, got injured, so he can't drive. Uh, and he reached out to me. He was like, you know, what can I do to work remotely? And one of the things I recommend to people that are moving from very physical work to wanting to work remotely is two things. One is exactly what you said. Start identifying your transferable skills, right? Start identifying the skills that you've utilized in that position that are transferable. If you worked in retail, you did inventory management. A lot of time you did schedule management, right? You've, you've, you've done merchandising and marketing. And there's companies like Shopify where your skills are useful, right? Customer online service. online retail is a big deal right now. And so there are companies that are looking for those transferable skills, but also now you have opened up a, the a, a ability to consult. You could be a consultant, right? So if you're coming from a retail space, there's so many people trying to open retail stores. What if you consulted with them on how to understand what their KPIs are for, for a retail company, right? how to build out your store, how to make sure that you don't run, you don't have out of stocks in your inventory, things like that. Um, and like you said, as a chef, you've been in a very high pressure situation, right? You've got event management skills, you've got resource management skills, you've got in inventory management skills. So really start to lean into some of those transferable skills that can go across industries. Yeah. The next thing I'll say is we have never been in a time where it is, e where it is more easy to where it's so easy, I should say, where it's so easy to go and learn a new skill for almost free, for free or almost free, yeah. and then just go into another field, right? You've got YouTube University, basically, uh, Facebook offers courses, Google offers courses, even Shopify offers courses, right? There's so many Canva offers courses. You could go learn to be a graphic designer. You could learn to be an online marketer. Uh, Facebook advertising, social media advertising. There's just so many ways that you can learn a new skill. I've even heard stories about people learning to code and moving into doing development work, right? Google, ha Google, Google has, has their own courses. courses. As well, in uh, yep. UI and UX and um, I think LinkedIn. Like So, you know, there, there's a lot of these. I, I guess part of the problem for somebody though is just to identify what's yeah. the one that they want to go into and I think it, it, it's important to you know pick your transferable skills and that's maybe to get your feet wet and get you know like just kind of build yourself up because I imagine trying to convince a recruiter like hey I'm Adam, I've been a <laughs> chef for 15 years and I'd be great in your tech right. company <laughs> you know like it, that's a hard, it's sell a hard sell to that recruiter so <laughs> you know so it, it, it's you know, versus like somebody coming from Facebook or Etsy or something like who's, you know, mm -hmm. applying for Agreed. the same position. Um, you know what I mean? So I, I think that that, that will be the, the challenge for people. But that's where, like you're saying, if you if you've identified areas and skills in which you'd like to develop and you've taken you've shown initiative, like you've maybe taken a course or you've done some training in it and you, and you can show um you know that would put you up there and it shows your your resourcefulness your enthusiasm your energy for um for learning these yeah. new skills as well as having the transfer yeah and the other thing i'd add is you know. while you're in that learning uh while you're in that learning period trying to transition there's a lot of entry-level remote work that can be done as well right so customer service uh virtual assistant social media uh management there's a lot of entry level remote work that can be done that don't re doesn't require a whole lot of experience or anything like that that you can start to do you know so that you can start to build your profile that way as well yeah in my last interview actually the one that will come out before this i interviewed hannah ah, that's my girl Kit, i she, love hannah oh well, there you go you know hannah yeah, yeah. Han and like hannah teaches people yeah. how to become virtual assistants you know that's her jam and well-paid virtual assistants you know like it's it's, it's mm -hmm. you know like and it, she's got twelve thousand people her i think course, has yeah. gone through her her courses like you know she, and she's got a really cool community like it, it's you know they're really collaborative mm -hmm. and, and engaged yeah. and you know, she's cool, you know, and, and she's she's built a really, a really cool mm -hmm. online environment and encouraging environment. And she teaches the skills to help people to go out on, uh, you know, as, as a virtual assistant, really, like rather than landing a remote job, it's more. Right. Like, via VA, yep. sell via packages, VA sell packages. You know Love I mean? Hannah. I met her in Barcelona a few years ago and we've just kept in contact. And she actually spoke at the conference on two panels about this very topic 
one panel she talked about was learning Smaller. a new skill to work remotely. And the second she spoke on was data, uh, was entry level remote work. And like you said, she's built an excellent community and she's built a, a wonderful structure that people can grab and learn from to build their own business. And it doesn't always have to be, I need to go get a remote job. It could be, I need to build my own thing as a freelancer. And that's one of the things that she teaches people how to do. Yeah. You, so you do both, you know, so you yep. have a job, full-time job and you have online courses. You have an online course, so the, mm -hmm. the remote ready bundle, which is where you kind of talk to me about that. So what does that yeah. do? If so I the remote ready bundle is uh, a 17, I think it's 17 videos, but it's a, a mini course basically that walks you through what I consider the four phases to land remote work. The first phase is where to find the jobs. Cause a lot of people don't know that. A lot of people have no idea that there are so many remote jobs out there. And it's not just because of the pandemic. There have always been remote jobs out there. I've been teaching this course for six years now, right? So this is not a new thing. Um, but the first phase is, you know, identifying where to find the job. So I, I show you the great places. There's, I think there's a list of 75 places to find remote work in there. I also teach people how to do searches better and talk to Google the way Google understands to give you better results. Um, and then phase two, we go through how to apply for jobs because there's an art to applying for jobs. It takes a little bit more effort than just pressing that submit button, right? There's some, um, some, some intention that needs to go into that application because keep in mind, it's you against at, at minimum 300 people, right? It could be anywhere from 300 to 3000 people. Yeah. So you want to be mindful and intentional about applying for those jobs. So great tips in there. Phase three is how to nail the interview. A lot of people go into interviews stressed out, unprepared, nervous. And the purpose of that section is really to kind of flip your mindset from thinking that I'm going into this meeting, begging for a job, you know, expecting to be judged and switching it to, I have something to offer these people. This conver this is a conversation about two people that have something to offer one another. And we're just trying to see if we're a fit, right? So it's an opportunity for you to come in and find out if this company is a fit for you. That's what the conversation is really about, right? And then phase four is how to negotiate your offer. A lot of people don't negotiate offers. A lot of women don't negotiate offers. So that whole section really kind of talks you through why you must negotiate, how to negotiate, and things that you can negotiate other than salary. People don't realize that salary does not have to be the only thing that you negotiate. You can negotiate a number of things, anywhere from how many days you have off to your benefits. And there's even a story in there about someone that negotiated a free car and free housing for a year, which is crazy. Yeah. That's awesome. Yep. And shares is another one. Like if you're at an early stage, I mean, if you're at the early stage of a, of a company that's potentially going mm -hmm. to have an IPO, which a lot of these tech companies will do, yep. um, shares are negotiable at the start of that, you know, especially if it's at that early stage, if those shares are either pre-IPO or under $100, like, like you can negotiate. Maybe they won't give you a higher salary, but maybe it'll give you more shares that'll vest over time. Exactly. And that's a retention strategy for the company anyway, because you don't get the shares until you're there like two years or whatever. Um, you know, but a lot of, fintech com mm -hmm. companies a lot of um software companies would would have share options and that's yeah and, and that can make you serious money too you know like if you get in somewhere that the share price goes up over time like you know you look at any like, Google, Depot. Google, facebook amazon shopify pinterest <laughs> yeah like if you got in anywhere and got given a couple of hundred shares or a couple of thousand shares five years ago yeah. but yeah. there's examples of that now you know what i mean mm -hmm. there's, there's there's the next ones of those hiring yeah. scaling growing really fast now and they're looking for people and as part of yeah as part of your negotiation i would out, say yeah. don't don't leave out shares i know people who've been working in software jobs for years it's funny you say that about women because like i know a woman who's not had a pay rise in four years and she's afraid to ask for it you know what i mean like it's like it's nearly like afraid i'm like oh my god every year i'm like pushing yeah, and and what i can get and sometimes you don't get anything but at least I made, a, that's I, made the thing. I made my case. That is you the know, thing. At least I so, tried. Like, let me wrap up what the course is about. So that's it's it takes you through those four things. Self guided. Yeah. It doesn't take a long time. You could really knock the course out in a weekend. Like it's not one of those long drawn out courses. Um, and it's okay. it's less than fifty dollars, and people can buy it in two installments. 
Um, and so I, I'm so glad you pointed that out about, you know, people not even trying to negotiate. People are so afraid of no, like just practice it in the mirror. It's not going to kill you. You will not implode. You, your brain won't melt. No, no is okay. And people forget that there's so many things in between yes and no also. So maybe they said no to what you asked for, yep. but what else can they give you? Right. What if they, if they say no, we're not going to give you a, a 15% raise. Okay. So you won't raise my salary 15%. What about a 5% raise and another week of, of vacation time? Or what about a 5% raise and 10% stock options, right? There's so many things in between yes or no, but I always tell people, if you don't ask the question, you are the one telling yourself, no, you told you no, you didn't give them the, you didn't even give them the chance to say yes. You didn't give them the chance to say no. You didn't give them the chance to say maybe. You told you no, they did not. So worst case scenario is they say no, and you're in the same situation you're in today. No harm, no foul, right? <laughs> yeah. Yep. No, I, I, but I think this is a really, it's a, it's yeah. one of those things. Yeah. It, it's, it's the rejection and it's the fear of rejection. And it's a, it's something that, you know, people have an inbuilt, innate, mm -hmm. uh, cringe to you know what I mean like the, people don't like it people don't I'm like always like but do you like but do you like being stuck better for something and then do you like being like I know no, <laughs> I know no, nobody likes side. rejection I'm, I'm but all, I'm, damn do you like being stuck I'm in the same okay, salary do you like being stuck in the same position yeah. do you like being stuck in situation that you don't like you don't like that either so pick your hard pick which hard you care about and that quick rejection is I mean to me that's just data it's just information, right? If they say no, now you know where you stand and you have a decision to make. Do I want to stay in this position or do I want to go somewhere else? If you don't ask, you have no idea where you stand. You have no idea what your next move should be. Yeah. And, you, and you'll just keep making it up in your in your head. You'll have these loops about what could mm -hmm. and couldn't happen and maybe will, maybe won't. <laughs> I'm on like I'm on your side. I'm all about asking. See them where you see them where you stand, and at least then you have, as yeah. you said, the information f to make the your own decisions. Then, because all the facts are on the table. Um, but I, I don't like that ambiguity of the what ifs and then not asking. So, but I, th it's funny. I interview quite a few freelancers on this show, and you know, successful freelancers who've built their own businesses. And when you're a freelancer, mm -hmm. like no is a part. Like you just gotta get used to it. It's like a muscle. You just gotta flex it. You know, it's like for every. 10 calls you have you maybe get you know five yeah. hard nose three soft nose and two clients you know and it's, it's okay like it's like you, you kind of build a resistance to it where you don't take it personally but i think that's where yeah that's the key is the not taking it personally you know like it, it's it's just it's what's available for you at that time yeah. it's not necessarily a personal dig at you if you did or didn't get that that increase you know it's um these companies work within budgets and work right with it is what it is right it doesn't necessarily you know, have to be personal <laughs> and here's the thing even if it is at least you know <laughs> right because otherwise it's been personal and it's been on the on the low and you didn't know about it right I, honestly I, I think about it this way imagine sitting around being hungry imagine your kids sitting around being hungry and never telling you because they're afraid you'll say no to what they want to eat like Come on, guys. If you're hungry, ask for food. <laughs> you want a raise? Ask for it. You want a promotion? Ask for it. You want a great project? You want on a great project? Ask for it. Right? You've got to ask. And at and at that initial stage of recruitment as well, like if you do the interview, like you're saying, like that's the best time. People are afraid at that point because like, yes, I got. That is the best time to negotiate because they want you. They want you because. <laughs> that is the best time yeah because they've already they want you and and you've proven yourself and and um well people are sometimes afraid to like push at that point or you know test the boundaries but that's honestly and you know i've seen this in multiple companies because i know people mm -hmm. who work at bloody everywhere like from facebook etsy linkedin oracle salesforce like we're in ireland all the tech companies are here i didn't realize that that's good to know <laughs> if they're in ireland <laughs> no nah, no it's Ireland is a very healthy corporation tax uh, situation that the rest of Europe isn't happy about. But like, so basically, you know, in one street in Dublin, you have 
Really? You know, that's slash, so crazy. Slash, I had no idea. Paper, I had no idea. <laughs> it's like <laughs> basically one street in Europe. Um, but Ireland mm-hmm. has a, a really good Apple as well. Yeah, a really good corporation thing. But but anyway, so like the point is, I know people who work, work at or who have worked at all of these companies and that's all all of them have always said the same thing yeah. oh, wish I wish I had a pushed harder when I was coming in like you know because every the people who did might tell you about it if you it's just like dating it, right like, oh, it's just yeah, like yeah, dating yeah, like yeah, at the beginning of there. like before you're in the relationship <laughs> you didn't ask. That's, <laughs> that's when they want to bestow you a, all the gifts on you and all the other things once you're in a relationship it's like I got you now <laughs> But that's that, but that is the thing. We actually did a panel on benefits and compensation in remote work at the Quick Commuting Conference. And one of the conversations, it was two recruiters. Actually, it wasn't recruiters. It was two people that work in compensation. They're the ones that build out payment plans, how much people get paid, compensation bans. And even they said, mm-hmm. always negotiate. They said that. Always negotiate your, your, your uh, offer. And two, it is best to negotiate before you get in the door because that's when they, they want you. And most recruiters expect you to negotiate. They come to the table with a band. They have a range. They know what they can play with, right? And it's their job. Technically, it's their job to offer you the lower end of that range because <laughs> they've got a certain amount of money they can play with. And they want to they want to get you for the, I'd say the, in their mind, the most value, which means the least cost, right? But they've got a range to play with and they fully expect you to negotiate. So do it. And- I think people are afraid that the offer may get rescinded. I'm going to tell you something. Very rarely will a company rescind an offer because you counter offered um, more than they were willing to offer you. Very few companies will ever rescind an offer. And if they do, you don't want to work there because I like to say they failed a test. They failed a, a huge test. The very first time you advocated for yourself, they penalized you for it. So if they if they can't handle you advocating for yourself when you walk in the door, what do you think is going to happen yeah. a year from now when you want a promotion or when you want to be treated well or when you feel like you're not being uh, supported, right? If they were sending an offer because you negotiated, trust me, you don't want to work there. They did you a favor. That, yeah. Keep it moving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I love that. But like you're saying, I've never, like at worst, people just say, no. You know what I mean? Or, or or it's it's often from all of my conversations, it's never just no, it's I can't give you that, but I could give you yeah. this. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. often like we're saying it's a it's a different share option, it's a benefits option, it's something yeah. about your health insurance or it's something about holidays or you know what I mean? Like each company's different, but um there there's often as you're saying, it's within the offer. The offer and the full package isn't it's not just the, your base salary. It's a it's a constitutes of multiple things. You know what I mean? Some of these companies will have um kind of like expenses too that like let you help you set up your home office and your setup and you know what I mean? Like there's lots of different ways that they can Agreed. Make and I I'll you. give you a little bit into so, my negotiation. Um because like you said, they told me no actually. I all I asked for because the salary came in at the right level, all I asked for was a signing bonus. Oh, that's a, that's all I asked for. I said, can I get a signing bonus? And they were like, well, we've never done signing bonuses before. And I was like, cool, I'm fine with being the first. <laughs> I'm I'm cool with being the first. Um, <laughs> right. I'll start this off. I'll be a pioneer. Like, right. But their trying. response was, well, we won't give you a signing bonus um, for the amount that you asked for. But here's what we'll do. We'll give you a quarter of that in moving expenses and will increase your base salary, which was a better deal for me, right? Because I asked for a one-time lump sum payment and instead they embedded that in my salary, which means my bonus is gonna be, is is calculated off of a higher number. And when it's time for me to get a raise, that number is already higher, right? I have a higher starting point. So they said no to my my counter offer, but they end up offering me something even better, quite honestly. And so don't be afraid to get that no, but you know, just don't be afraid to ask because also Adam, maybe they can't do it right now. Maybe they say, well, we can't accommodate, you know, that ask. Well, I come back and say, well, what about in six months or my annual review? Do we think we can meet that salary requirement during my annual review when I, when I hit the one, uh, one year mark, right? So there's all these thing levers you can pull in these conversations you can have. 
it doesn't have to be adversarial. Doesn't have to be difficult. Doesn't have to be contentious. It's really a conversation about two people just trying to figure out how they can work best together. That's really all it is. Yeah. That's it. It's your life too. You know, you're <laughs> going to spend an awful lot of your life working for right. many hours a day. <laughs> you get rid of your children. Right. So right. You exactly. Them, you know what I mean? So like you want the best deal you can get. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're, you're just advocate. You're advocating mm -hmm. for yourself and there's nothing wrong with that. You shouldn't feel guilt about that. You shouldn't feel it's not a nasty thing. It's, it's the, you know, and, and the more experience you have with it, the more comfortable you get in it. And, and yep. you know, you don't always get what you want, but yep. you might've got a better And that's a hard one negotiation you know, thing, but I do have to say this for the ladies out, for the women to. out there, um, at least in the U.S., we have a pay gap problem. I don't know if that's the case in, in Europe and in other countries. Yeah. 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 I so the pay, so, yeah, pay gap is not an issue that we created. It's not a problem that we have to fix. But one of the things that we can do for ourselves to help address the pay gap is to negotiate. We continue to allow the gap to widen when we don't negotiate our salaries. And so I think it's our duty to ourselves and our duty is, you know, to fellow women workers to start to negotiate so we can do what we can to, to minimize that pay gap. Now, again, the structure of the system was not put in place by us. It's not meant to be fixed by us, but we do need to advocate for ourselves that we don't, so that we don't continue to exacerbate that issue. Absolutely. I think certain, certain women are good at advocating mm -hmm. for themselves, like especially anyone I know who works <laughs> in sales, like software sales, those women yeah. will sell you know what I mean? Like not only the software, but yep. they will, no, but like they will sell themselves to get the best deal that they can. You know, I, I've seen that. And I know people who, who work mm -hmm. like that, but may, maybe people who aren't in frontline sales, you know, roles aren't as comfortable asking. And, and like I'm saying, they, they either avoid that conversation or they, they don't want to have it because it's uncomfortable. And I, I'm hundred percent on board with you, e, you know, equal pay, men and women, nothing, I have a young daughter, of course, the value best her, yeah. and I hope that she's in the world that, mm -hmm. that, you know what I mean? That she has the same opportunity to make that, the values, you know what I mean? Like, so it's, I'm, I'm all for it. And, but like you're saying, you as the individual have to take that ownership, yeah. like the responsibility, because nobody's going to give it to you if you don't ask for it and, and, um, make, make your own stand and, and, um, try and get the best for yourself and the best deal. Libya, it's been a pleasure. I've absolutely enjoyed talking with you. Um, I think you've given a lot of great tips there for people to get ready for finding a remote job and then how to negotiate when they you know, get through that interview stage, which I think was a really interesting Thank you. Thank you for having me. This is a great conversation. I, I could have talked to you really for another valuable, hour, so for sure. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, look, and, and me too, but I try to keep them around half an hour. We're 37 in now, so I think, look, I'll leave it there. Um, speaking of young ones, I, like it's about my kids' bedtime now anyway, so I'm going to have to yeah. uh, go and do all that. Um, so so I hang out on Instagram a lot. Um, I do a live every Tuesday night places? answering questions. I share remote, from, uh, remote work tips every Wednesday, and I share remote jobs on a regular basis. So... Uh, on Instagram, I'm Libria Jones. That's L is in Leo, I, B is in boy, R, Y, I, A. Um, my website is libriajones.com. Um, you can also connect with me on LinkedIn. Same name, same name across platforms. <laughs> it's all business. We're not hanging out on LinkedIn. I'm not. I, it's all business over there. Yeah, my, my, my boss can see me on LinkedIn, so. <laughs> And mine too. Hence, I keep my link. But you know what? Um, we didn't actually touch on it. Yeah. It was something that I, yes. I did want to touch on. It was just li LinkedIn is really powerful. Keeping your mm -hmm. profile up to date, adding connections, um, and the job search and notification features that are on LinkedIn. Like, yeah. Don't I got my hire yeah. at Shopify through a recruiter off LinkedIn? Like they head hunted people in Ireland, and I was one of those <laughs> people. So like. The and the I get CEO of our company found like me on LinkedIn. Week. I was not you know looking I mean? for this like job. All um, the time. He sent uh, me a message on LinkedIn because he had done a search. My name popped up because my profile was up to date. I had all the right keywords in there. And he showed my uh, LinkedIn to two people he had already hired that used to work with me. And they were like, yeah, hire her right now. 
So when he called me, when I got on the phone with him, the first thing out of his mouth was, I'm going to offer you a job. There was no interview. I didn't interview for the position at all. My LinkedIn was up to date. That's how I got this job. <laughs> you know what? I love it. Yes, exactly. So that's, let's end it on that note. LinkedIn is a place for business where you can connect with <laughs> Libria and myself, but keep it up to date and keep it organized right. and look professional on there and don't be putting up holiday pictures and stuff like that. That's for your Instagram. Thank you. Know, you. Like your it's been great. Take care. Um, I think that's important. Thank you, Libria. It's been a pleasure.